In this tutorial, I'm going to explain how to be a game master in the computer-assisted role-playing game system. Being a good game master is a large topic that can be covered in many, many videos, and there's a lot of opinion associated with it. I'm not going to try to delve into any of that here, but a lot of the advice given to be a good game master in other role-playing systems applies to this system as well. What I am going to cover is the mechanics you need to understand in order to use the system. To start an adventure within your fellowship, simply go to the fellowship and click on Join an Adventure. You can then select a module. I'm going to use Ramsk Outpost. And then you can add or remove characters from the adventure. Your individual players will claim the characters that they wish to play. Once all your players have joined and selected the characters they want to play, you can start the adventure by clicking on Claim Game Master. The first thing you notice off the bat as the screen is slightly different. As Game Master, you immediately have access to the entire map, regardless of what line of sight rules may apply. The individual player characters are limited in what they can see based on the line of sights of their character. This highlighted area allows you to know what they can and cannot see. Anything not in this highlighted color is unknown to them. When characters move out of an area, the highlight is less pronounced. This indicates an area that the characters know about, but that they can't currently see. Another thing that's different is that the GM can deactivate characters. This is especially important. All of the NPCs start out deactivated by default. This is something that is not available to player characters. However, because the Game Master has to keep track of so many characters, it's impractical to have him assign actions to every character at the beginning of every turn. The Game Master to activate a character simply gives him an action. So if I give this character the action to move to here, it's now activated. If I have an activated character that I want to deactivate, I can simply click on the character and then click on the deactivate button. This character is now ignored as far as turns are concerned. It's important to note that this character can still receive attacks and other actions from the player characters though. Once you're engaged with the players, you want to give the NPC an action so that it's included in the turn calculations. Because the Game Master has to keep track of so many characters, you click on an individual character to give it its action. I can then click on additional characters and give them actions as well. When all the player characters and activated NPCs have an action, the turn will automatically proceed. The turn will then end as soon as any playing character or non-playing character no longer has any actions to perform, and the game will wait for the player to give that character another action. While combat is very similar to the way it is for a player character, NPCs have some extra options to help the Game Master deal with the fact that there are many characters to manage. For example, the Defend Position button will cause this NPC to have a behavior where it automatically attacks anyone who gets in range, but otherwise takes no action. The attack target button is similar to the attack buttons and basically replicates that action, with the exception that the NPC will not interrupt gameplay to ask the GM if the attack should be repeated. It's important for the game master to keep track of this, otherwise the NPCs may attack and surprise the game master when the Game Master would have thought they would have stopped. The Close and Attack button simply combines two actions. By selecting a target that I want this character to attack, the character will automatically move until it is within range of the target character and then switch to an attack. These buttons purely serve to make the Game Master's job a little bit easier. The Game Master has some additional options with regarding inventory. To allow the Game Master to dynamically adjust the difficulty, the Game Master can create new items from basically thin air. So if I believe that this character is too weak to put up a good fight, I can give him, let's say, a heavy saber, and then maybe even a gamma tunic to give him some defense capabilities. This is not available to player characters. These items basically come into existence as the Game Master clicks on them. The purpose of this 
is to allow the game master to dynamically balance the game to keep it challenging. If the characters are engaged in dialogue, the game master may want to issue a skill challenge. We now know that the character failed the skill challenge and the game master would adjust the dialogue based on this. The game master can also award experience if he feels like the characters have done something particularly interesting. The game master can also teleport characters or reposition them by clicking on the character, and this works with both player characters and NPCs, and clicking the reposition button. By selecting a new location, the character is teleported immediately to that location. This can be used to simulate an actual teleportation type event, but it can also be used to make it easier for the game master to set the stage. For example, if I want the Play the NPCs to be in a particular location when these characters enter this room, I can just reposition them to that location quickly and easily. It also means that I can store NPCs in a essentially a pocket universe. So if the game is going, for example, too easily for the players, I can just bring them in so that there's extra enemies when they enter this room. You can also do the opposite. If you think that there's too many here for your players to easily handle, I can move these characters out of the room in an attempt to balance the difficulty to keep the game challenging, but not too challenging. The Game Master can also use the Create Area Effect button to create basically explosions and other effects by selecting a center and then the radius over which the effect should take a place giving it a name and the amount of damage at the center. The damage automatically tapers off at, based on the distance. The effect will take place immediately. The Game Master can also reveal parts of the map that the characters wouldn't normally be able to see by using the Reveal Map button. By clicking on this location, the players can now see this location. I can do this repeatedly for whatever reveal is appropriate to the story I'm telling. I can remove all of the map reveals by using the Remove Map Reveals button. I also, as a game master, have the ability to alter the map. You can use this to simulate secret doors that open, or possibly collapsed halls. Finally, the game master has controls to both suspend and end the adventure. Suspending the adventure allows you to end for a particular session, and then you can return to this adventure when you have time to play some more. End Adventure allows you to actually end this module. The players can then use their experience gained and any monies or items gained in the market or in the character sheet to adjust to whatever's happened to their characters. I hope you've learned enough from this video to be a game master in your own adventures. Have fun.